Hi, it's Amanda. I am going to show you today how to isolate bacteria from a spread plate. As you can see, there are quite a lot of colonies and we want to get single colonies that can be isolated um, to completion. And isolated to completion just means that there's one single colony uh, there and that the genetic information comes from one single colony. It must be really hard to hear me, so we'll see if we can do this without this. Okay, so I wanted to show you what um, the difference between sediment, where bacteria can adhere to something, and free swimming bacterial concentrations, what they might be. So as we can see here, this is a plate that is totally overgrown. And what we, in when we do bacterial genetics, we call this a lawn of growth. Lawn of growth pretty much meaning that there is so much bacteria on the plate that it is entirely covered. Um, there's no way we can isolate single colonies from this. And so therefore um, we wouldn't really be able to use this, this sample or this plate to take bacteria from it. And um, in comparison, so this is a water sample from Silver Strand, one of the samples that Alfred got us. And what we can see is that the, it's far less concentrated. Um, you can kind of get single colonies here, but even this is still a bit too much. Um, and then to compare, so this is important to consider, um, this is the IB sediment. This is uh, said is on the, the back here. And we always label on the side of the plate that contains the agar, not the side that has the lid, as you can see here. So it's on the back here. And it's a sediment totally overgrown. It means there's more bacteria that live on the sediment necessarily than live in the uh, seawater. And when Nick did a dilution, so he did a 10 times dilution, um, this just means that for every, maybe if he did 100 microliters, for every 10 microliters of the sample, the water sample that he used, he used 90 microliters of water to dilute it. And what we can see is that we are starting to get to a place where we can be able to isolate single colonies. Like I think, you know, some of these ones right here are great examples. So you really want to be able to pick out singular colonies uh, to be able to isolate them further. Now, um, moving forward, we also took some toothworm samples and something I'd like to note going back to this IB 10 times sample is that we can't really see too much of a difference between the colonies here. They're all pretty similar in morphology. Morphology meaning what the physical characteristics of the bacteria look like. And what I see mostly from this is that there are just a bunch of white plain colonies here. And that's not to say that these aren't a bunch of different colonies. It just means that the ones that we isolated don't produce colors. Um, however, from the toothworm samples, this is gonna be a little bit harder to see, but I've drawn all over this. And what we are seeing is that um, so this is from tube worms, that's how it's labeled, and it's 10 times diluted. And um, I went through and identified different spots. This is kind of hard to see with the backlighting, but different spots that had different colored colonies. So one example that I, I know you can see now is this one right here. And in particular, it's a purple colony. So I have circled ones that are purple um, that you can see. And then if they have this Y here, that means there's a yellow colony here too. And so I went through and I identified all the colonies that I could find that were different colors so that I could try to isolate um, bacteria based on you know the color themselves. And the reason that we're doing it this way is because in our lab, we work with a particular bacteria that's purple. And um, part of our work is trying to identify or isolate more of these purple colonies. And so in particular, I'm very excited about these purple colonies and I'm pretty excited about the yellow colonies too. So today we're going to pick them off of this plate and isolate them 
um, by like by streak streaking them out um, until they have very single colonies. And so something that we can look at is, you know, in in on these plates, the colonies aren't singular. So it's Mo like it's most likely that I'm gonna pick up other bacteria when I am streaking it out. And so what we are going to do is we're even if we get a little bit of the other bacteria, when you streak it out, you're able you streak it out so much that you make space between the colonies and you'll see this in a little bit so that you can eventually select singular colonies. And a an example that is very unrelated to this, but a little bit easier to tell the difference is that this is a plate that also was, uh, we did uh, spread plating with. So it's the same technique that we use for the seawater, but this is a totally different method. But what we can see here is that the density is far less here. And so I would feel a lot more confident selecting a singular colony and streaking it out and knowing that I have just one type of bacteria there. And uh, I don't think that I could say the same for the other plates. And this is just a good lesson in when you have environmental samples, when you have water samples, you want to consider diluting multiple times. So while Nick did a 10 times solution, we would want to consider doing a 100 or 1000 times solution so that our end product could look a little bit more like this and you can actually select out more colonies uh, more easily that way. So this part is gonna be a little difficult, but I think it's a good learning lesson. So from here, I'm gonna turn the computer so that you can watch um, what I'm going to do and kind of learn some best practices for isolation. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is to clean off your bench with ethanol. Uh, this is part of your sterile technique. So the space that I'm going to use, I'm just going to wipe it down. So, okay. The second step, the second step that you're going to do is you're going to turn on your Bunsen burner. And so there is a gas, um, there's a gas handle right here with the hose and it leads to the Bunsen burner. And I'm going to use a starter and it has flint on it. So it will make a spark. You can see that. And you wanna practice, you practice that by pushing your thumb against it a little bit harder and scraping it against the, the flint. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay, now we turn on the gas and we start the flame. If you can't get the flame to start right away, you'll want to uh, try a few times and turn off the gas then, and then try it again. Eventually, like you wanna let the gas dissipate and then try it again. Okay, so then the next step, what we wanna do is I'm going to pick the, the plates that we're gonna isolate from. And we have some, um, we have some plates that are um, marine, marine agar. So we have two different types of marine uh, media here. And I am using marine agar to isolate them. And uh, that is because we are already growing it on the same one. So we, we identify these with the yellow stripe. The, the yellow stripe is hard to see here, but there are others that are easier to see. This is different kind of media that's identified by a blue stripe. And so, you generally want to isolate bacteria going from the same media to the same media always, because there will be differences in bacteria's ability to use certain types of nutrients. And you wanna make sure that you are, um, that you are being consistent between the, different, um, between the different bacterial isolates that you're using. So from here, is a good time to start labeling our plates. And we want to be, um, so Nick just did TW 10 times. Uh, TW is tube worm, is shorthand for tube worm, and this is 10X. And I wanna be a little bit more descriptive than that. Generally, I like to write the date that I am doing my work just so that 
I can keep track because eventually you have a pile of things that grow on your, um, that end up on your bench and you want to make sure that, you know, when you're sorting through them, you want to determine if something's old or not, that you can see, okay, this one's from the 18th, you know, I think that that's, I think that's good. Uh, I could throw that away if I wanted to. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is I'm going to say uh, we could keep the same naming convention TW, but then also I am going to add some other descriptors. So I have quite a few purple colonies here. And so I will say TW purple, and then there are multiple, so purple number one. And then I also want to say, okay, it is the 19th. Cool. So this is how I'm going to label my plates. And then the, the ones after that are going to be purple number two, purple number three, purple number four, or uh, there's some yellow ones. And so we'll start over from the top with some yellows, but let's just do TW purple number one. So in this step, I'm going to use sticks um, to streak out the bacteria. So this is my, these are my clean sticks. These are my dirty sticks. I keep the tin foil with autoclave tape on it. Autoclave, um, an autoclave can sterilize your uh, equipment or your media with the use of high heat and high pressure. And you use this piece of tape to indicate the high heat or the high um, or the high pressure. So from here you are going to take a stick and you are, I like to put my plate up to the light and then with my finger, identify which, uh, which colony I would like to take so that when I turn it around, I already have an idea of where I wanna select my bacteria from. And so here I got my finger on the spot that I wanna to go to there's a purple colony underneath, and I am going to pick it up, pick up the lid by the side, and I'm going to put my stick on top of that colony. And now my stick is on the colony. If you turn the stick around, you see kind of where the glossy area is. And now with that stick, I'm going to create the primary streak on this first plate. And that primary streak goes back and forth quite a few times. And then now it's a dirty stick. So once you've made your primary streaks, it'll kind of look like that. You'll have quite a few going back and forth. These ones are a little uneven, but that's okay. And then we are going to, from here, take a clean stick and draw out the second part. So from here, we're going to draw it out again. We're gonna pass through some of these lines a couple times and then stop passing through them and just streak it out a little bit more. This is a dilution. So from here, we can open it up again. And we're doing this all by the flame to make sure that the space is sterilized. So whoops, okay, yeah, so this is hard to do at this angle, but here we go. We're gonna pass through. There we go. Generally, you don't wanna put things down on the bench. If you ever do have to put them down on the bench, you wanna put them with the top side down. Then I'm gonna turn the plate, take a new stick, pass through a couple of times, take it away from the pass-throughs, bring it down a little bit more. There we go. And then one more to finish it off. So we'll do four sets of streaks. Bring it down. There we go. Cool. And so now that because I put this down, I'm just going to pass this through the flame really quickly and put the lid back on. So what this looks like in the end is four different streaks. We have our primary streak. We have our secondary streak, our tertiary streak, and then our ordinary streak. By the time we get to either the third or the fourth streak, we would be expecting single colonies. And if there are two different or even three different types of bacteria on the single plate, we should be able to pick the different colonies out based on their color to know that we have a single isolated colony. And then we would wanna do this one more time just to be sure 
make sure that no other different color bacteria grew on the plate this time. And then we would feel good about storing it forever. So with that, I'm not gonna go through all of the different ones on how to do it, but we will, I will streak out the rest of the ones that I circled on this plate and we will incubate them overnight at um, about room temperature around 25 degrees Celsius. And we hope that we get some nice uh, purple colonies tomorrow. So thank you.